It's a Friday. Welcome aboard. I am Sunday Gloria aboard with UCTV News. The headlines. The Minister of Public Service. Science Teachers Union demand salary enhancement for head teachers and their deputies. To invite us for a meeting and give us a solution. Not, 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 not meetings just to talk. A solution. Careless Ugandans to hinder elimination of HIV AIDS. Tebagala kumanya. Tebagenda kufuna dagara. This causes the challenge. And workers MP concerned as teachers request for early retirement. Uh, which uh, <coughs> may be in a few years we may find we don't have enough teachers. And remember there is a ban on, uh, on recruitment. Once again, a very good evening to you. Welcome. This is UCTV News and I am Sunday Gloria Abwach. Science teachers and their association, the Uganda Professional Science Teachers Union, have threatened to lay down their tools before the beginning of next term if salary for secondary head teachers and their deputies is not enhanced, basing on a directive issued last year by the president to enhance salaries. Vincent Elong, the chairperson Uganda Professional Science Teachers Union, says they have given the Minister of Public Service an ultimatum of two weeks to ensure that the salary enhancement is harmonized in our sector especially the the, the administrators and not entirely the teachers in secondary and deputies in secondary only were left out but when you look at the entire education sector like ntc that is the diploma awarding institution uh vitivet the ptc farm schools all their aid of institution who are scientists were considered so to us it is a marginalization when salary structure came in 2022 the union took it up and we wrote to different offices including the first lady and we have the letter here and the the first lady, because we had held a meeting with the PS, that is 2022, when salary for scientists were, were announced. The first lady was briefed by the PS and he went and briefed the cabinet, and his, which was shared by His Excellency the President. And that is why we have a directive that was issued last year in July. July 1st at the commencement of the, the financial year. A directive was issued and all of us know very well that a presidential directive is like a law. When somebody fails to implement a presidential directive, is a sign that they are trying to show that they are more powerful than the president himself in his wisdom who issued the directive. So this directive was addressed to Honorable Minister of Public Service, Honorable Wilson Muruli Mukasa, the Minister of Public Service. Immediately this, this directive came. We followed up with a different concerned ministry. Our Ministry of Public Service told us they have already made addendum structure. That was in 2023. And they had pushed it to Minister of Finance to get them the money so that they, 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 they enhance these categories as the president directed. Along the way, they kept promising us, wait the next month, we reach uh, January, they are telling us Feb. Then when the financial year was almost ending, they just told us this thing we have budgeted for it in, in the next financial year. We were all confused, we were all totally put off when the salary structure was issued and we didn't see these head teachers and deputies were considered. Yet Minister of Finance, Minister of Public Service and Education was telling us the same thing. We have discussed, we have concluded on this thing. Just be patient. Let us now wait for the end of the financial year. So we are saying that the science teachers all just like the medic has always done it, this time they say they are coming in solidarity. So we are going back to the trenches. We are going to on come 16 September. If this, if government cannot get the only 16.8 billion, budget was increased from 58 billion to 72 billion. So many trillions were added. And somebody is not sensitive of the need of salary increment. Actually, when I saw that budget, I felt all the civil servants have been 
considered. But only to see nobody's salary was not increased for anybody. I'd even started telling the arts teachers, now you will get your package. But, but, but to see that the, we don't even know where all that five billion plus added, actually over five, is it 14? 14 trillion. Can you imagine 14 trillion? And then we are seeing on media and all platform, Auditor General Report, where they are saying every year we are losing 9.7 trillion. Remember the wage bill for this year is just at 7.9. That means government has money to pay everybody who is a graduate above 5 million. So let, they let them reduce on corruption, but for this one, with the presidential directive, we, 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 we are tasking the Minister of Public Service to, 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 to work around the clock. That's why we are giving them two weeks to invite us for a meeting and give us a solution, not, 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 not meetings just to talk, a solution. We want a solution and the invitation must be formal. We have here a, a commitment from Muruli Mukasa when we are calling of industrial action. Now, the chairperson of the Uganda AIDS Commission, Dr. Ruth Senyonyi, has decried the high levels of carelessness among the public in the fight against the spread of HIV, which is likely to hinder Uganda's vision of eliminating the spread of HIV AIDS by 2030. Joseph Kabale reports. According to the Joint United Nations Program on HIV Stroke AIDS, UN AIDS, 2021 report on Uganda, 89% of the people living with HIV knew their status. More than 92% of the people who knew their status were receiving antiretroviral therapy, and 95% of those on treatment were virally suppressed, meaning that Uganda was on a better track of achieving UN AIDS HIV treatment targets if the progress can be maintained. However, Dr. Ruth Senyonyi warned that the legs that among both the infected and the non-infected members of the public amid its fight against the spread of the virus is likely to fail Uganda's dream of an AIDS-free future by 2030. Avantube <laughs> Chizibu wa kuongela yobu wa debu no. Echua bantu wa basinga tebachima inti. Wembela kudagala na hindi mirabu nungi ngabu eni no di mirabu liru naku. Okuwa taka uka kano nenka omu la lachifu uka chizibu. Chetu wa galo okubanti tukutukuwa ta. Tibuli omu atesti nze. Agenda afune dagala. Na yaba antu teba testi inga. But ya. Abalala bama nyinti bo kubangwa mshara we ya testing ali negativu na yate kwa kubanga ali negativu. So wali webi ntubinji, wali wabali na abachara banji, oba abami banji. On the same note, the Director for Planning and Strategic Information at the Uganda AIDS Commission, Vicent Bagambi, noted with concern the persistent rise in the spread of the virus among the female gender, particularly the teenagers. Abantaba chafuna, oruwade obupia, abakafunye mwa kaguno. Era bachara, basinga abami. Era abawara abato, basinga abawara abakaza abakuru. Uh, speed je bafuni rako akauka kama kwenye. Kwetu ba turi noko wani taka uka kama kwenye njia, turi noko la banti. Vulnerabilities. Uh, Ezire tera abawara abato, okufuna akauka kama kwenye njia zivao. Kat vulnerabilities zezo zeziriwa. Tumanyi nitu wali waba wala abato, abe tunda, mubibuga, atene baguruwa, aba asaja abakuru, abali na sente. Uh, Tumanyi nita uh, aba wala abato, aba singa, tebali na mirimu, atebo bato lina chakola, atecho chukulete la obo kwe gomba, obo uh, okwa garanto ofune sente. Na wade uh, tori nengeri jazifu na muno, obera desperate. Norwecho toja kugamanti wetu batu liba kwe gata, tunoko the second or mobatu kwa the seven. It's upon this ground that he rallied the government and other stakeholders to stimulate the funding of the anti-AIDS projects. So as Uganda actualizes its dream of eliminating the virus by 2030. But olewo ebi intu ebi mu, katugeze nga soda, nga mineral water, nebi rara, ndo musoro gunaba guvudao, bagu committee inge gukoreku, uh, uh, services. 
eza au kurwanyisa kauka ka mukenenya na ye a okuvoru otetu nabo collecting centers or wakubanti chali cheta gisa ministry of finance to way account was bazigenda of course ne ministry of health it where is a trust uh, body enaba elabante centers zo kunganye bwa bulunji atenis kozese bwa bulunji so uh, we tuli kati tetuna bo kuzifuna centers joseph kabali uct venues Workers MP representative uh, Arina Itwe Rakajara has voiced an alarm over the large number of teachers requesting early retirement and issued a warning about a possible catastrophe in the education sector. Rakajara attributed it to the existing salary disparity, noting that majority of those applying for retirement are arts teachers. We received the bill in Parliament that will highlight all those issues. However, it is true people have asked for early retirement. And uh, it is estimated about 5,000 teachers have already applied for early retirement. And those are the ones that are known. There is a, a big team that just leaves the school and go and do other things without notifying the government or the employer. That would be estimated around 10,000 maybe. And this causes the challenge to the whole sector of education and especially the Ministry of Education, uh, which uh, maybe in a few years we may find we don't have enough teachers. And remember there is a ban on, uh, on recruitment. And if you recruit like in local government, the procedures are also long. So this uh, causes a very big challenge to the Ministry of Education and uh, the whole sector of education that uh, we may find the mismatch of students and teachers in schools. You find a P7 school has four teachers or five. What does that mean? That means those, t those students are not studying, those peoples are not learning. Uh, and this could have been caused by uh, salary disparities especially science, between science and, the, and arts teachers, uh, most of them were demoralized. And uh, I suspect that could be one of the causes of why people are asking for early retirement. Uh, and that means if the trend continues like that, uh, the big challenge will, be, will, will, will rise really in the Ministry of Education. A country which is not uh, educated, then that means even the plans of middle class status and all that, then will be affected badly. So we really need uh, to take mark and watch what is happening in the education sector. It is not a simple thing. It is. Uh, it is. A, it will be a very big, big impact on our education and our children and uh, and and. and the whole process of, of doing things in this country. Uh, if it is true, which is true actually, 5,000 have applied officially, those are official applications. But more than 10,000, it shows that they have left actually schools. They no longer teach. You find a P7 school having five kids, or f five teachers, five teachers, and five teachers cannot teach a P7 school. Only five teachers. They will teach from P1 up to P7. So that, that is a very big impact. And to me, I think this has been caused by the disparities in salaries. Uh, you remember the government increased the salaries for science teachers. And the, the fraction is huge. The gap is very big from an artist teacher, an art teacher and the, and, the, and, the, and the science teacher. When uh, yesterday, but one were in parliament discussing on how to handle uh, medical students uh, for internship, the government cannot accommodate everyone, hospitals cannot accommodate everyone, allowances cannot be provided, services cannot accommodate all of them, yet, 
we are diverting all students from art studies to science. So this, this is uh, causing us a very big challenge. And if we are not careful, we need, I think, to go back on the drawing board and reorganize the education sector in terms of salaries, in terms of curriculum, in terms of, of, of career guidance of our children. Because if there is a mismatch, one group studies one thing and we cannot accommodate them. So we would have wasted a lot of time. UCTV News is taking a break and we'll be back. UCTV, good news for all. And finally, from the local scene in our ongoing series on the impact of the church in youth empowerment, Father Dr. Joseph Mary Sebunya, a director of the Yes Center, highlights how the honor, rather how the hour of prayer has become a sanctuary for young people, offering them not only solace, but also a deeper understanding of their faith. In a spirited display of faith and unity, young people gather at Yes Center for a remarkable session of organized prayer known as the Hour of Prayer. This event, which has rapidly become the cornerstone of the spiritual lives of many, offers the youth a dedicated moment to connect deeply with the Lord through worship, reflection, and vibrant music. The Hour of Prayer is more than just a prayer session. It is a dynamic spiritual experience that combines heartfelt worship with uplifting music, creating the atmosphere of profound connection with God worship music and creating a welcoming environment they have successfully drawn a diverse group of participants eager to deepen their relationship with god it has sessions of organized prayer times one of the famous hours here or days at this center is the holy hour actually it turns out to be holy hours <laughs> because it's at a moment with the lord it's youthful it's vibrant you have some music playing and some people really actually say, oh, the music is a bit too loud. Yes, it's a way of getting these youthful souls to encounter their Savior. In a moving testament of the power of faith and music, young people are experiencing profound spiritual healing during the power of prayer. This session is organized. Prayer has gained widespread attention for its unique approach, blended worship of music that has not only uplifts, but also heals and teaches. The hour of prayer has become a sanctuary for those seeking not just solace, but also a deeper understanding of their faith. The music serves as both a teacher and a healer, guiding the youth through complex spiritual landscapes and offering them tools they need to overcome their struggles. Father Joseph Mary Sebunya emphasizes that music is integral to the session's impact. The music is filled with messages of hope, love, and divine healing. It is meant to reach to the core of each person and teach them about God's love and heal the wounds that they may be carrying. It's also healing. It's counseling. It draws a person listening and participating in this prayer session. And we always conclude it with a moment of adoration, with the Blessed Sacrament. And believe me, so many things have happened in this place. People have become possessed, have been, have been relieved of their burdens, of those possessions. People have had challenges in life, have had a change of direction by encountering the Lord in these prayer sessions. At the heart of the Hour of Prayer gatherings, where the youth seek spiritual healing and renewal, stands a symbol of warmth and comfort, and that's the Grotto of Mother Mary. Father Joseph Mary Sebunya, a key spiritual leader guiding these sessions, takes pride in the presence of this sacred site, which has become a place of refuge and solace for many young people. He speaks about the profound impact of the grotto that has on those who visit it. Quoting the Bible, he emphasizes the nurturing and comforting of the role of Mother Mary. The warm embrace consoles the youth, offering them peace and reassurance during times of uncertainty. Father Sebunya believes that this connection to Mother Mary is vital for the spiritual well-being of the youth. We have a procession with our Mother Mary. Here we have a grotto of Mother Mary uh, where young people are invited to the warm embrace of Mother Mary. She's a treasure in the church. Of course, you know it. That, that's, uh, I think that's you now the, the Bishop Fulton Sheen from the AS used to say, 
one problem with those who criticize the Catholic Church is that they criticize it on her strongest point. And one strongest point of the Catholic Church after the Eucharist is the place of Mother Mary. The place, the fact that we have a mother. That's what Christ did at Calvary. says, John, behold your mother. And ma woman, behold your son. And John was a youth. And I think it's a great feeling for young people to know that they have a mother. Yes, everyone has a mother. Some mothers are absent mothers. Some mothers are in heaven. Some mothers are far away from us as we are in the city. But to know that you have a mother who is always with us in those little songs, Mary loving mother, is a warm embrace. And many young people have had this consolation. The cancers, the imitation of Mother Mary, but especially the powerful intercession from the rosary. And so they come and encounter Mother Mary. As the hour prayer continues to grow in popularity, the growth of Mother Mary remains a cherished element in these gatherings, symbolizing love and care that Mother Mary extends to all her children. Through this sacred connection, the youth find not only comfort, but also renewed sense of hope and faith in their spiritual journey. Nora Osende for UCTV News. <laughs> And away from that, it is time now for today in history. Thank you for watching UCTV News. We are going to take a break. And when we return, it will be time for the Rome Reports. UCTV, good news for all. Dear children, friends of Jesus, you are welcome to your program. I'm Dorothy Atire Songo. Be with us all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord for church leaders. We pray for their well-being. May the Almighty God guide and lead them through their missions. We pray to the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You are watching UCTV, good news for all. For this and more, tune in to Kasese Get Radio 100.5 in Western Region, located at the hill of the Diocese of Kasese. KGR brings you all Catholic programs and an advertising platform in all our radio shows like Good Morning Rinzori, Chama Woka, Ukute, The Business Show, Propeller, The Request Show and Sports, Evaluation by Hingaba Kuluka, Late Night Show and many others. Our other services include Isuzu Tipa, a no car, public address system, live band, Omoke Kera, an audio recording studio, and outside live broadcast. For more information, call 0773 597 166 or visit our website www.kasesegetradio.com. Kaseseget Radio, Omusondoria, the voice of truth. UCTV, good news for all. And with the Rome reports, we do appreciate your time. Uh, this is the Uganda Catholic Television, and it has been the Friday edition of UCTV News. I'm Sunday Gloria Aboch. Good evening and good night.